Star Wars. I've seen it, you've seen it, we've all seen it, we all know it, you get it, let's move on. It's no secret that ever since the original trilogy was first released on home media that George Lucas spent years altering his original Star Wars films. Be careful what you're saying about R4 because you can get bopped on the head real quick. There were lots of changes, some minor, some major, some good, some bad. In terms of the original VHS releases, the trilogy was mostly left alone apart from some minor changes like adding the 4, 5, and 6 along with each film's respective subtitle before the opening crawl. The real shenanigans started when George Lucas released the special edition of the original trilogy in theatres in 1997, where audiences were treated to severely altered versions of each movie. A New Hope is the most dramatically different film in the trilogy, being treated to a number of new visual effects and some audio fixes. Most of these changes, in my opinion, improve the film rather than take away from it. But then you get moments like the infamous Han shot first scene that to this day still causes outrage. Empire is more subtle with its changes, choosing to enhance elements in scenes rather than adding new elements entirely. Then to cap it all off, Return of the Jedi got a musical number. <laughs> this reportedly cost 1 million US dollars to make. Uh, but but the thing that bugs me, if you look at it, is is the very first shot of it, right before the song starts. You see size noodles in the background, and, and it's the real size noodles that we've that we've seen, you know, as kids. And she has the feather, mm -hmm. and then we, you cut away, and then the start, song starts, and you cut to her, and she, you know, she she enters, and it's the CGI size noodles without a feather. And I'm like, so there's, you know, you spend a million dollars. All that money. Right, all that money on that scene and you don't even, like this glaring continuity mistake, <laughs> is, it doesn't matter. And some people call my gambling addiction a bad investment. I, I, I mean, look, they put Hayden Christensen in Return of the Jedi. Even after Lucas sold the franchise to Disney, changes were still made to the trilogy. A New Hope, now on Disney Plus with 100% more monkey. The special edition trilogy was released on VHS and Laserdisc that same year in 1997, and this release marked the death of the original theatrical cut being distributed on home media. Because ever since the release of the special edition, the original theatrical cuts have never been made commercially available at all. At least that's what I used to believe. So one day I found myself watching some old Red Letter Media videos when in one of them they brought up the fact that the 1995 VHS and Laserdisc releases of the original trilogy were the last time that the original theatrical versions were released on those home media formats. Despite the fact I do not own a VHS player, I thought it would be a neat idea to at least own copies of the quote-unquote original theatrical version of the trilogy. So of course, I went straight to eBay to begin my search for the VHS tapes that contained the theatrical versions of Star Wars. After my search, I ended up with these. Now before you say anything, no, I didn't get scammed. Remember how I said that after their final release in 1995 that the theatrical versions were never made commercially available again? Well, turns out I was wrong. These are the limited edition versions of the 2006 DVD release of the original trilogy that was released alongside the prequel DVDs. What makes this release of the original trilogy on DVD different from the other versions is that these are two disc special editions and the second disc in each set contains the theatrical versions of each movie from the original trilogy. Well, okay, technically, but not really. See, the reason people don't talk about these DVD releases very often is because there was no effort put into these releases of the original versions. And the movies on the DVDs are just rips from the 1993 Laserdisc versions of the original trilogy pasted onto DVD disc. So not only does this mean the picture and audio quality is kind of awful, but the films had already been slightly altered by the time they made it to Laserdisc in 1993. So not only are you watching a version of the movie that has been ripped off of an outdated format, but it isn't even technically the original theatrical versions. That being said, they aren't the special editions and this is the closest I can get to owning the theatrical versions on a format I can actually access and watch. So I am 
more than happy to have these versions. Thing is, I haven't actually watched these DVDs yet. So far, I'm just going off of the opinions I've heard online. So, for the first time, I am now going to watch the original theatrical cuts of the original Star Wars trilogy. Just to clarify, I grew up watching the 2006 DVD release of the original trilogy, so the version of Star Wars I know and love are the special editions. But for years now, my go-to method of watching Star Wars has been the 2011 Blu-ray release. Recently, I've picked up the entire saga on 4K Blu-ray from episode 1 all the way to episode 9, but I haven't actually sat down to watch those versions yet. If I had to guess, those are going to be my go-to way of watching Star Wars from now on, unless these theatrical cuts turn out to be the second coming of Christ. Anyways, only time will tell. For now, I'm going to just enjoy finally watching the theatrical versions of Star Wars. Be back in a bit. Now that was an experience. Look, regardless of what I'm about to say, I am super happy that I finally got to watch the theatrical versions of these movies. I've heard all about them for years, so to finally see them is a dream come true, even if they aren't exactly what was shown in cinemas originally. Special editions be damned, the theatrical versions still hold up extremely well today. These movies never needed special editions. That I agree with. All that being said, even after watching these versions, I can safely say that I think I actually still prefer the special editions. But please, before you pick up your pitchforks, let me explain myself. Yes, the special editions altered the original movies, but the truth is they are still the same movies, just with a few new visual elements and an extra scene or two. I'm of the opinion that the majority of the changes in the special edition were for the better. Yes, I agree that the cantina scene works much better when Han shoots first, but I wouldn't trade the enhanced Death Star battle to fix that. I don't need to go through all of the changes again because that has already been covered to death somewhere else. But I really don't think the theatrical and special editions of the films are all that different. To me, they are the same movies. Now, I understand why a lot of people still swear by the theatrical cuts. A lot of people just want to watch these movies as they saw them when they were a kid. I guess my perspective is just different because I grew up watching the special editions and to me, that's what the original trilogy is. Personally, I'm not going to sacrifice picture and audio quality to watch a version of the film that is equal in quality to what I've already seen. Like I said, this DVD released used the theatrical versions from the 1993 Laserdisc. This version of the film was produced before any visual or audio enhancements were made to the films, so ripping these straight onto a DVD obviously results in a serviceable but ultimately flawed viewing experience. <laughs> The films are also letter and pillar box on these releases, meaning the picture on the TV screen is tiny. Fortunately, after I tweaked my TV settings, I managed to get the picture looking like this, which was more than watchable for me. To be concise, I would take the 4K Blu-ray release of the special editions over these limited edition DVDs of the theatrical cuts any day. I wish I had more to say about the theatrical cuts, but the experience I had watching them was pretty much the same as watching the special editions. I mean, it was something I've always wanted to do, and I feel like a more true Star Wars fan after doing so, but I think I've discovered after this experience that the special editions are my Star Wars movies. I'm not saying they are better or worse than the original versions, but they are the versions that I prefer to watch. Fortunately, nowadays there is a plethora of fan-made projects that make it easier than ever to watch the original theatrical versions. Some of these projects are even closer to the theatrical versions than what are on these DVDs. There have been multiple projects over the years, but most people agree that the best theatrical version of Star Wars circulating right now are the Project 4K77 versions. Project 4K77 is a fan project dedicated to scanning and restoring original 35mm film prints of the original trilogy and transferring them into high quality online 4K video files for all to see. Now I haven't personally seen any of these versions, but from what I've heard online, they are excellent and the picture and audio quality is better than any official release of the original movies we've seen. Thing is, so far they've only finished A New Hope and Return of the Jedi. 
From what I've read online, Empire is really close to being finished and you can even watch a beta version right now. The annoying thing about these versions is that they are a real pain in the ass to track down. I tried to watch them a while back, but gave up because I couldn't get access to a download link of any kind. But I'm sure a lot of you out there are smarter than me, so go try your hardest if you need to see these versions. But by all accounts, the Project 4K77 versions of these movies are the best way to watch them. Honestly, I'm surprised that Disney still hasn't released the theatrical versions of the original trilogy in any capacity whatsoever. As far as we know, they have the rights to do so, and being the money-hungry grubs they are, releasing the theatrical versions of Star Wars on Blu-ray would be about as close as they can get to literally printing money. I wouldn't rule out them doing it one day, but for now, I don't expect to see anything like it anytime soon. Well... I've done it. I've finally seen the theatrical versions of Star Wars, and I feel the exact same. Damn, I thought watching these movies was meant to elevate me to a higher plane or something. Guess not. In conclusion, I would still totally recommend watching the theatrical versions of Star Wars at least once, if anything just to see how filmmaking has evolved since the original trilogy was first released in cinemas. If you want these DVDs for yourself, I got mine off of eBay very easily and for a very cheap price. I'm assuming it's the same deal everywhere else, so if you want to get these versions, you can get them quite easily. Of course, if you are a more dedicated fan, you can go and track down a version of 4K77 for yourself. That's personally what I would recommend. But I'm too lazy to do it myself, so if somebody else could do it and send me the links, that would be great. But at the end of the day, Star Wars is... Star Wars. Every version has its strengths and weaknesses, and after my experience with both versions, I can easily say that you should just watch whatever version you enjoy the most. Star Wars fans are already divided enough. Let's not argue over which version of the movie everybody should watch. Although, before I go, I just want to say, Han shot first. <laughs>